Okay, we're going to go over the process of bringing in a CAD file and, you know, reutilizing some of the information by exploding the CAD file. Now, this is not my preferred choice. My preferred choice is that everything is recreated from scratch and we s simply use, you know, the CAD file as a reference. But I know that's probably not the popular answer, so we'll go about this in the alternative fashion. And keep in mind that when we're done doing all this cleanup, we're going to copy and paste this information into a clean title block. So we're not going to, that's the whole reason we created this one as a temporary one. So we're going to start by exploding the CAD file. Um, I'm going to do a temper or a partial explode, and I'm going to have to do this twice, and that has to do primarily with the way it was brought in here from the CAD file that it was saved in. So I'm going to explode it. You'll notice that it's still acting, you know, pretty much as one entity. So I'm going to have to explode it again. When this happens, when I do the second explode, I'm going to get some errors. You're going to want to take a look at these, but this is one of those errors that we have to take action on if I, you know, want to proceed. So since I do want to proceed with this, we're going to have to delete those items. But I would at least take a look at what it's referencing so you kind of know what to look for. So it's talking about some filled regions. And it's, you know, we can highlight them and show them, but you'll notice when they're gone. So we're going to go ahead and delete. And it did some strange things in this example. It actually broke the filled regions up into different parts and pieces. And we're going to want to clean that up as well. So I'm going to go over what the cleanup items need to be. I'm not going to physically demonstrate every aspect of it, but I'll go over the basics. So the, the upside of exploding this is that it does create the filled regions and the textiles for us. The bad part is we still have some cleanup. So we're not going to want these to remain named filled region drawing one, etc. We're going to want to rename these was something that makes sense. So we'll call this uh, solid gray. We'll have to do the same thing for any other filled regions. In this case, there's only two, so the next one would be solid black. That's a global change, so it would change all of these, you know, different filled regions. But you're going to want to delete all these extraneous ones and just create one filled region. So you know, you would edit this sketch, you know, and create the rest of the boundary accordingly and finish the sketch. Now for text items, and you can see that I just created a dummy logo so you guys could see that we need to bring in the raster image and that, you know, we've got some other information in here. So I just, I didn't want to put anybody's name in there in particular. Now these items that I'm seeing up here came in as attributes. Okay, so from AutoCAD, that's what they were, was attributes. So similar to a parameter, um, unfortunately, they only come in as text here. So we need to create labels in all these different sizes. So this particular one is going to be uh, romantic 69, 256. So I'm going to need to create a label that's the same as that because I can't place text here. Otherwise, it's not something I can modify once it's in my project. For things that are strictly text items, so for example, you know, my company name is probably never going to change, so that could be text. This information could be text. But same thing holds true. You're still going to have to, you know, do some cleanup on these. I don't want it drawing one. We'll rename it to be uh, Romantic 764. And you would do this for all your different text styles. So kind of, you know, keep these things in mind and be aware of what needs to be a parameter. So for example, my sheet number needs to be a parameter. Status 1, 2, 3 will be parameters. Now, sheet number is a parameter that already exists in my title block. So if I were to place a label, that one's already part of my list. If I need to create something different, so you'll notice status 1, 2, and 3, you're going to start the label command, and it's not on this list. 
so I need to create a new one. And when I do this, I'm going to have to do this from a shared parameter file. So if you have one already, I would go ahead and just append that one. If you don't, you're going to have to create one. So for this example, I'll go ahead and create one. And we'll just call this, um, well, for now, title block example. And yours would be your company name. In fact, let's do it that way. Let's do company name because it's not specific to title blocks. And it's just a text file that I'm going to add information to. So these are shared parameters which you know will transfer into the project. So we're going to group these. I generally create a group you know strictly for title block information. And then what that parameter is. So make sure that you change it before you save it to the actual type it's going to be. Otherwise, you're going to have to delete it and recreate it. So we'll call this status1. And I just leave them at whatever name made sense to you guys from your previous title block. We don't want to confuse people when they're transitioning. So try and maintain naming of elements as much as possible. So we'll say OK. And we'll add it over here. Okay. And for this example, you know, obviously my text probably isn't the right size, and that's because I haven't modified my label. Again, you guys would want to create your label types first and then start placing your parameters. So if I want to change the justification of this so that it's center justified, those are instance properties. So, you know, whatever you guys want to set those to and then, you know, position them accordingly. And then you would proceed from there. So if it's text, that means it's not editable in the product project. If it is a parameter, then it is. So this will be the end of this video for now, and we'll proceed, proceed to the next part.